Welcome to the Charles Carroll Society. On today's show, we are going to teach you how to harden your communications against active jamming with existing equipment. This is a war and this is your fate. We are the face of your new police state. We are the law. Welcome to the Charles Carroll Society show. Thank you for stopping by. If this is your first time finding us, please hit that subscribe button. Um, there's, uh, I'm active on many different social media accounts, including Minds.com, which is, is wrapping up to be, uh, looks like it's going to become a, an interesting thing. Um, in today's show, we are going to go over using existing communications and how to harden that against active jamming. The thing that got us motivated about this active jamming or got me motivated about this active jamming is watching the issues going on in South Africa. When I was much younger, I opposed apartheid. I opposed um, basically taking people's rights, uh, natural rights away from them, including the right to vote, away from them uh, because I thought that was wrong. And now um, I'm beginning to see, I'm beginning to see um, the government of South Africa take a hard communist turn. And that's not um, unknown to America. America has opposed hard communists when it comes to Cuba. It is opposed in uh, uh, hard communists when it comes to Venezuela. So I essentially believe that individuals have a right to property. They have a right to a lot of things. And yes, because of the evils of the past doesn't mean you get to do evils now. There has to be a better way. If the white South Africans in South Africa aren't Africans, then I am not an American. I've been, uh, black people have been in America for about 300 years, and Europeans have been in South Africa about 300 years. So I look at this and take uh, kind of heed on what this is. I also think it's a great a uh, lesson and something that for uh, we in the American readout and patriots all across America to take a look at. Um, why have we focused on this jamming issue when there's so many other issues with the slaughter, uh, the, the violence going on in South Africa, which is completely a violent place. And as I said in my last video, we recognize it's not only white farmers who are are, are, are being victimized in brutal ways. Um, but why are we focusing on jamming and communications? Because we in the American Readout have some expert expertise in that. We have spent many years uh, learning about it, uh, communications, studying about it. And um, you can go over to Amron, which was started by John Jacob Schmidt of Radio Free Readout. Uh, and there's a, they have actually spun that off into a separate site. We over here at Charles Carroll Society have created what we call the American Readout or Patriot Darknet. We call it both. We call, you generally call it Patriot Darknet for people who don't know what the American Readout is. And that is um, how to communicate with existing communication in the most secure way possible. So because we have expertise in this, um, some level of expertise, obviously not experts, uh, we de I decided to volunteer my time, my energy, and my knowledge in helping other people who may be in need. And that's why we're focusing on communication. In this uh, show, what, what, what I'm gonna do is go over how to use existing physics <laughs> um, to, and, and the reason I laugh is when, well, you guys are out on YouTube and nothing you say in YouTube is funny, but I call uh, math white people's magic. White people's magic, oh no, the white people's magic, it works called math and physics. Oh, it's in it. everybody's already immediately upset. It's called a joke. Joke. Anyway, um, because the things that we're going to talk about is how to harden your communications against jamming. Um, and I think this is very useful for patriots. It, this, is, it, this, uh, this video is going to be very useful to uh, everyone who is using communications in any type of liberty operation. That's what we call a liberty operation. Um, so, um, and so I think that that's a kind of a focus. So one of the things we take a look at, um, credence, by the way, to St. Isidore of Seville, who is the patron saint of the Isid internet uh, and of communications and computers as a traditional Catholic. We ask 
all of the saints and everyone who's gone before us as Christians to pray for us. That's what we do as Catholics. So what we call it is the bottom line up front first, just to let you know what we're talking about. Bottom line up front for, and by the way, just, I'm sorry, before we get that, let me talk, let me explain to the use case that we're talking specifically about. The use case that we're talking specifically about are people who are in rural environments or wherever and who want to communicate. We in the American Readout have long anticipated that normal communication patterns will be unavailable to us, cell phones, internet, and things like that, and how to build a network to communicate when, um, you know, natural disasters can deny you the ability to communicate, you know, with normal communications, um, things like that. So in this specific case, we're talking about a use case where there's a rural landowner who is minding his own business or whatever, and people are coming to attack his farm or his or his ranch. And that person, uh, and we have seen this, and I've covered that in the last video, which I'll put a link up here, or is it here, whatever, you'll see it right here pop up, um, is the person comes in with this active jammer. And, and, and a lot of people apparently didn't understand what these were, how they worked. Uh, they, they thought it was this, and we went over to the last video. Please read, watch that video. It's a pretty short video. And explain what these are. So if someone jams it, things like your Wi-Fi won't work, your security system, any type of uh, wireless security system, like, you know, a remote break things, wireless security um, switches on gates, uh, a lot of that will be jammed. And so I explained that where these come from, we're not guaranteed that these come from China, but China was uh, heavily involved with the Rhodesia uh, war. They were, uh, and that Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. And it is interesting that a lot of these jammers are coming from China now that are being used in South Africa to really uh, destabilize their their ability to produce food and function as a country. Not a lot, because these jammers don't seem to be used in a lot of attacks, but they are used in some. So we are trying to show people how using existing equipment and physics um, can make yourself much more resi resilient to jamming. So what we call this is bottom line up front. So here it is. We recommend you use amateur radio, i.e. ham for your communication. Okay. We also recommend you create a frequency plan um, detailing which frequencies will be used for emergencies and which will be used for normal communications. Um, and that, com that communication plan is going to become your communication security plan, your ComSec plan. And you then pass that out to a very small group of people, even your XO and your, C your, your people who are in charge don't need to know this plan. Whoever's going to be managing this, you, th this plan says, hey, we're going to attune to this frequency during normal times, and one hour after something bad happens, we're going to tune to this frequency. We're going to tune to that frequency. And so everyone knows what frequencies to hop on. At 12 o'clock, you know, everyone jump on this frequency. And that kind of communication plan is known. These are the, here, those are our basic recommendation. So again, bottom line up front, our specific recommendation is we recommend not depending upon cell phones in case of emergency, because as you see, as we explained in the last video, cell phones are easier to jam, okay? The recip when receiving something is easy to jam. Transmitting something is very difficult to jam. And by the way, just as I get into this, it will be a bit technical, but I don't know how to present uh, this information for people who are on the other side of the world who may benefit from this or for people here in America who may benefit from this. Technical information is technical, so we do not recommend you use depend upon cell phones in case of emergency. Um, we recommend anyone who's at risk of active jamming and being threatened to use am what we amateur radio. We use a short uh, thing called ham radio here in the United States. We assume that there's some likewise function or likewise radio in South Africa. The specific models that we recommend, um, well, I'm going to go talk to, I looked at Amron's site. Amron just went and said, a lot of the patriots out there, what radios are they using? A lot of the patriots out there are using the Bofang, Baofeng, B-A-O-F-E-N-G, Baofeng radio, UV5R. $30 radio does almost everything you need, and it's a $30 radio. Every, everyone can afford $30 to keep your family from being butchered alive without being able to call for help. And we're going to explain how these radios works a little bit later in the video. We're going to get there. 
<clears throat> but I'm giving you the bottom line up front. And basically, I'm going to go again over all these issues or specific things in later in the video. The other radio we recommend to get is the Yesu, Y-A-E-S-U, Yesu FT60R. That's a $170 radio. Basically does the exact thing as this Baofeng, but it's a little bit more. Um, the documentation's a little bit better. It's a little bit stronger of a radio. I personally went with uh, my, I, I and many and a couple of guys I know went with the Kenwood THF6, which is a $259 uh, $59 radio. That's this radio right here. This is this is a handy uh, uh, a, a handy talkie. This is a small radio that does two meter and six meter band. Obviously, it fits on your armor very well. Fits in your armor here. You can key that mic. And basically, the reason that we went with this over the Yesu. Uh, the Kenwood THF6, which is $259. Some people can't afford that. By the way, all these radios, the Baofeng, the Yesu, the Kenwood, can speak to each other. It's ham radio, two meter, six meter. They all work together. The reason I chose this radio from my own, you know, instant trade study was the Kenwood THF6 meets mill standard 810 CD&E, which are the mill standards for resistance to vibration, shock, humidity, and light rain. In other words, I wanted a, a radio that was kind of like the Yesu, but that was much more rugged. Because if I'm going to be out and about and I only have one radio, I want that radio to be as rugged as possible. I'm not trying to say it's going to be super rugged, but this is the radio that we want. So we recommend you get one of these radio. Bao, uh, Baofeng UV5R, 30 bucks. Yesu FT60R, 170. Kenwood THF6, 259. That's the radio we went with. Um, the way to resist jamming using your existing ham communication, lower frequencies, higher antennas, more power. Lower frequencies are more difficult to jam. Higher antennas um, are more difficult to jam, and more power is more difficult to jam, and we'll go into that. We recommend you reserve some frequencies for emergency use only in your local area. Um, how do these people know what frequencies to jam? Because Well, they know what frequency low jack works on. They know what frequency this or that works on. So what they're doing is they're sitting up there, police scanners are very inexpensive. So they're sitting outside your farm, just sitting out there watching, and they pop on a scanner and they watch the frequencies you use. Then they set up their jammer to jam those frequencies you use. So when you're talking to your buddy, you talk on one frequency, but for emergency use, for emergency use, you set yourself up with one specific frequency. That's part of the frequency plan. We recommend that the group in your area monitors these emergency specific frequencies at all time. Uh, one of the things that we like about all the radios we recommend is that they're dual band recipient. In other words, I can receive on two meter, but I can be monitoring six meter all at the same time. And if someone screams for help on six meter, I can hear that. I can be sitting there listening to meter and talking and, and yucking off or just communicating. But if someone talks to me about a different band, I can hear that dual recipient band. OK, so we're going to uh, now move into observations on what we're recommending for. Again, this is very applicable to any patriot activity and any kind of liberty operation that we're looking at in stateside. And obviously, it's, it's very useful for anybody who's out and about um, in South Africa who may be facing this jamming immediately. So we're going to move into what we call observations. Leave each of these, all of our predictions, the things I just gave you and the things I'm about to go over with you are based on what we call observable facts. Um, and I'm going to post on the Charles Carroll Society blog. Please find me there. Please find me there at the Charles Carroll Society blog. Um, I'll post all of the um, references and notes for people to look up. And again, take what we put out there and make it better. And if you can share it, please share it back. That's how we improve. It's open source uh, type of work. Um, a cell phone jammer. So here's our observable facts that we're basing all of our recommendations on. A cell phone jammer, i.e. a jammer, is just a radio transmitter. That's it. All the rules that apply to a radio of, apply to a jammer. That's one of the most important things. Those guys are sitting outside the property jamming, but they're just using a, basically they're grabbing the pickle and squeezing it. The, uh, um, in ham world, we call this the, the pickle, the mic. They're just taking this and jamming it hard. And they're jamming it across all the frequencies. Bam, 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 bam. Or a lot of the frequencies. Jammers require a po power source. 
to be portable if it requires a, power, a portable power source. If you're going to move it, it requires a portable power source. Power required is typically based on our experience at least approaching three times the output put of the transmitter. Again, from our experience, if you're, they have this much power, they take three times that in a power source to put it across that. Um, jammers require an antenna that is tuned to the transmit frequency range. Except for some happy coincidence, each frequency band requires a separate antenna. In other words, that's why you see on that picture, which I hopefully will get here and paste into the video, the guy with all these various six antennas. That basically means he's jamming six big frequency ranges. Six, not 20, six, because each antenna, there's some, there's some that they can jam more, but that's whatever. But generally, he's got those six antennas to jam six different frequencies. Though, and this is very important. This is, this is a black man's magic called math, whatever. Or maybe it's the ancient Greek magic to make everybody not get all bent out of shape. The lower the frequency, i.e. the longer the wavelength, the longer the antenna. There are ways to make an antenna more compact, but these reduce the bandwidth range of uh, frequencies that antenna can, uh, can cover. Basically, to, to create a longer frequency, you need... I'm mean, sorry, to create a lower frequency, you need a longer antenna. Well, did you see that guy walking around with a bunch of antennas that were different sizes? That gives you a hint that you can defeat that jammer with your own longer antennas because he is trying to figure out how to jam smaller frequencies or he's trying to jam long frequencies in a very ineffective way. So suddenly the guy with the man pack's got to walk around with 10, 10 meter whips or 10 meter antennas. Because you're going to be transmitting on six meter. He didn't have a six meter, a nine foot antenna. Jam jammers or transmitters are detectable. That's something very, very impressive to know. If someone pulls up outside your farm and starts jamming all these frequencies, you can, your security system might go down, but you can detect that you're actively being jammed and boom, that alarm should sound and then all of your emergency planning should go in. A jammer operates by overwhelming legitimate radio signals. That's very important to know. You, what it's sitting there trying to do is stop various radio signals. That's why it can defeat cell phones so easily. It can defeat cell phones so easily because the cell phone has to transmit and receive. Transmit and receive. So it's much easier to block that reception. So it's jamming that reception. And then you, your cell phone will always say out of net, you know, no connect. Because it may be transmitting and the cell phone tower may say, hey, I can see you. Here's my little signal back to you that says hello. And because your cell phone can't receive it, the cell, it's like the cell tower says, I can't really communicate with you. But ham radio, <laughs> it only transmits. It transmits, you release the mic, then it receives. Because when you key that mic and transmit, click, boom, you're transmitting. It's very hard to block that. Well, maybe I shouldn't explain exactly how to jam a signal. So anyway, let's just put it this way. It's, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, nerd boy almost uh, nerded out there. So it is very hard to jam a, 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 a transmit only signal. And I'll take the guys who helped me put this together and myself, I'll take them against any guy in the world on how to get things done. Jammers must transmit close enough to the frequency is jamming. Close enough depends largely on the characteristic of the receiver. To jam a wide range of frequency, jammers must tr transmit on multiple frequencies across that range. Transmitting on multiple frequencies spreads the power, the mobile power of that jammer. So less is transmitted on every frequency. In other words, let's say the guy has a thousand watts. So what? He's now got to do a thousand watt across six frequencies. So that just drives it down. But if you're pushing out a thousand watts transmitting on one frequency, you can overcome his jammer because you're pushing out a massive amount of watts on one frequency. To jam multiple frequencies would spread power even more. The less power transmitted at near given a frequency, the less effective the jammer is. Okay. So we've given you the front, uh, bottom line up front. We've given you the facts that we've, dis we've realized. If you're challenging those facts, please, you can comment below or you can comment over on Charles Carroll Society. Like I said, I'll put this, these, uh, sh uh, the, the, the notes up here with actually the, the backup so that you can go and find the references and challenge those. <clears throat> but uh, this is where we're at. This is what we think is, um, this is what we're going to be doing. So, you know, you can work on it yourself.
defeating jamming. Tra first step to defeat jamming, transmission simplicity. A cell phone requires a two-way communication with a cell tower to make a call. That means if the cell tower can't hear, i.e. receive, it also can't tr talk, i.e. transmit. A simple two-way radio, amateur, a ham, or even CB, citizen band, MERS, multiple use radio service, um, GMRS, general mobile radio service, can transmit and be heard regardless of the ability to receive. In other words, you've got to practice and you got to trust physics. Somebody jams that communication. You jump to your emergency frequency, which is one button push, bam. And you say, help, help. They're attacking my farm. This is barren. This is the barren farm. And you have to trust when you key that mic, it is so hard to stop that transmission. And the people who are receiving you in 360 degrees are going to be able to hear your call for help. But when you unkey the mic, you're going to hear static because you might not be able to receive. But you can practice this with your own jammers. People may have practiced this with their own jammers. Just to prove this fact, when you key that mic, it is in almost very hard to stop that transmission out. But when you open it, you'll hear static, but you just keep on it. This is a very important thing. It is much more difficult uh, to successfully block transmission. Caveat. By the way, we do not recommend family radio service, FRS, because it's very, very low power and it can't use an external antenna. Um, this is an, these are the antenna on my radio. I can buy uh, better antennas uh, and pen antennas with different gains. Um, and also, uh, this is coax. So what I can do with this antenna is I, I get a, I, I actually have a, should have brought that in. I have a whole bunch of different antennas uh, that I can use to, uh, to get gain. But uh, family uh, radio cannot do that. So we don't really recommend it. A 10 to 25 watt jammer, remember he may have 100 watts, but he may be blocking four signals or so. A, t a 10 to 25 watt jammer on a, a family radio service, i.e. FRS frequencies, would probably overwhelm a 0 0.5 watt signal on the, FRL hand uh, the FRS handheld. This is a 5 watt radio, by the way. But I can up this, and I can make this more powerful, and you can buy a radios yourself that are more powerful. Another great way to defeat jamming using your existing equipment, antenna height. The higher your antenna, the longer the distance from the jammer is your antenna. This reduces the effect effectiveness of the jammer. Also, higher gain omnidirectional antennas hear better out horizontally and not as well down. Basically, they don't really, they're not going to get there it's harder to jam them if they're up high listening to somebody who's you know 40 feet away from your house or 100 feet away from your house who's trying to jam you directional antennas may also do a good job of pulling in distant signals and reducing jamming adding height and stealth such as mounting your antenna in your roof attic obviously non-metal roofs Maybe something that you should consider. In other words, right above your bedroom, you can actually wire this coaxial right up into your antenna. Boom. Put that into your antenna. And, and that is greatly increasing your ability to overcome jamming because you're, suddenly your antenna to your radio is, is next to your nightstand, but it is powered all the way up. It's the antennas all the way up in the, the apex of your roof. Some people didn't realize that simply putting the antenna higher. And if you're lift, if you know, if my family is in this ranch and it's and it's their lives, the coax goes on the wall and the antenna goes up there because wood and shingles generally don't impact the RF that we're dealing with. Obviously, metal roof or differently that wouldn't work on a metal roof. Um, and by ha we mean stealth. The people are coming outside. They see your, you know, your main ham tower out there but they don't know that your emergency tower is sitting right above your bedroom inside your farmhouse frequency selection if you're operating on a different frequency than the one being jammed you won't be affected obviously it only jams certain frequencies also lower frequencies longer wavelengths are require longer antenna for effective transmission and jamming because jammers are transmissions longer antennas are more difficult to carry on a man pack 
For example, two meter signals, very uh, very high frequency, VHF, 144.000 megahertz to 146.000 megahertz are harder to jam than cell phone frequencies, 2G, 3G, 4G, which are 800 megahertz, LTE, YMAX on 700 megahertz, or 1700 to 2100 megahertz, because the two meter is lower. Okay, always lower. Six meters, very high frequency, 50.00 to 52.000 megahertz are harder yet to jam. 10 meter, high frequency, 28.00 to 29.700 is even harder to jam than two and six. Note that a, one of the things to note is AM broadcast towers that you see out there, they don't, people most believe that those massive low frequency AM antennas have the antenna on them. You see these towers, oh, that's a, wrong. That whole tower is the antenna. That's how much antenna wavelength this guy's got to carry on his man pack to jam that AM. That's why he doesn't jam that AM that often. Power. For a jammer to operate, it must overwhelm the valid sis, the signal. By transmitting at maximum power legally allowed to you in your area, the jammer must bring more power to bear upon the frequency range. In other words, whatever the frequency that you can uh, transmit legally, that's what you should transmit. Whatever the frequency, and if my family's life it w as, was at, um, at risk, I would have whatever I could legally do and click whatever I needed to do, period. Because it's my kid's life and I, I'm, that's it. You know, The Lord demands that you protect the souls under your under your uh, charge. Absolutely. Um, frequency hopping. Frequency hopping spread spectrum, F was short title FHSS. Frequency hopping spread spectrum is a meth method of moving between frequencies to mitigate radio interference and radio jamming. This is a very common technology used by the United States military. Um, it's used, obviously, in the, the main uh, United States military radio is called the PRC-117 Golf Man Pack Radio. This thing does it automatically. It's, I, you know, I don't even know how it does it, but it just does this massive frequency hopping, constantly frequency hopping to, to ve defeat jamming. Um, so the United States military has created an automated method with very advanced ComSec, obviously the best in the world. Um, we don't have any automated means or to do that uh, with amateur radio or any other radio, actually. <clears throat> but what we do do have is the concept. Frequency hopping defeats jamming. Um, so why don't we figure out how, how to manually do frequency hopping to defeat the jamming that might be going on at the South African farmers and also the jamming that might be going on um, at here in bad times and in, in anywhere uh, in America, including the readout. This might, for example, this way include uh, radio operating tr transmitting normally on one frequency and then receiving on another. In other words, you send out on two meter and you frequency hopping is very important because it's the way the United States military, which is one of the best that the world has ever seen, um, guards its own communication. We don't have an automated way to do frequency hopping. Frequency hopping would mean you'd go just like through the 140. You know, right now, if you're doing two meter band, you'd go 144.001, 144.002. Obviously, you wouldn't go in order. Frequency hopping, you'd go in some kind of random way that the enemy could not easily jam. You might even frequency hop over to a six meter and two meter, whatever you're allowed to transmit on. And he would have to try to jam all of that at the same time. So some things would get through and actually you could tune it. Suddenly you could get the hello back and you could get through and suddenly everybody switched to this different thing. You don't have that ability to do the automated. So you do it manually. You transmit on two meter, you listen on six meter. You transmit on two meter, you listen on six meter. So now he at least has a jump, jump too. And of course you don't tell people what, bands you're going to be communicating on so that it requires a lot more uh, difficult thing for them to jam uh an example of this would be uh radio operators transmitting normally on one frequency and receiving on another 
Another idea is to transmit in an emergency on a very different frequency than you're using. You know, you always operate on two and six meter band, but you kick over a 10 meter band when you are absolutely um, in an emergency. If a radio operator could not get into contact over a certain amount of time, they would have previously agree to try yet another frequency. Guess what? We're, you know, we're, our emergency plan says that when we go out at 12, this is what the Amron does all the time. At 12 o'clock, everybody tune into this net on this frequency, this HF frequency, listen for a direction. This is where we're going, boom. And then what happens is everybody else who has radios, if you have a, you're listening to HF in America, I don't know what the rules are in South Africa, but in America, we can listen all we want on every single frequency band. So what we do is we listen on this frequency band. It comes down to HF and then people have in their rigs and their trucks because everything's mobile once you get loose or in your car. They, they'll call on cell phones if that's available. They'll tap on the internet. They'll If that's available, they'll squeeze the, uh, the mic and talk on two six meters and says, here's what the information. They're trusted people to relay the information through different frequency bands, making it much more difficult to jam a, nat uh, a, you know, a nationwide frequency. Um, if, um, let's see, many ham radios uh, can monitor multiple frequencies simultaneously. Our ham radio, the, the one I use, the Kenwood, can. I can be playing on two meter and transmit. So I could literally just power this up, put it next to my bed, and be constantly monitoring whatever the emergency frequency is. And I can have that program. So I can go through and say, okay, it's uh, Monday. We're monitoring this frequency for emergency Tuesday. We monitor this frequency for emergency Wednesday. We monitor this. And I just kick that next to my bed. And it's, you know, you'll hear the scratchy, but you should never hear anything on the emergency frequency unless it's an emergency because you, you know, unless there's other people playing on that band. But you're always listening for your friends to come out and say, you know, whatever your code word is, green, 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 boom, you're, you wake straight up out of the bed. You're listening to this because that's the frequency that you're um, not, you're monitoring that's not normal. Operating mode. <clears throat> next, um, one of the, the, the next defense against jammers. Operating mode. With FM and uh, simple digital voice system, a jammy signal that is almost as strong as the receiver as a signal being jammed will successfully jam reception. Reception. In other words, if this is a 5-watt radio, you could probably jam this reception with a 3-watt jammer or 4-watt jammer. The reception you can jam. AM and single sideband signals can be understood or at least detected even when the jamming signal is stronger by a little than the signal being jammed. In other words, when I'm transmitting, I'm just transmitting, even if I'm transmitting exactly on the signal that's being jammed, you could be at six watts. This is a five watt radio. Obviously, I would put this through and make this a much stronger signal than, than six watts. But a five watt radio, you could be at six, seven, eight watts and I can hit that mic and I can transmit through the jamming because it's 360 and you're bouncing off the stratosphere. That's why the, um, um, so essentially always look at that it's very difficult to jam transmission. And that's why the entire world relies upon SOS because C, what they call CW, which is Morse code, is one of the most effective ways to get through all kind of noise and go as, as far as distance, SOS. Literally, you can add an SOS key to this. I can actually buy, take this, ha this, this handy talkie radio, put it there, and I can, you know, you can learn how to do SOS. Anybody, it's a, what is it, three dots and three long dashes, three dots or whatever it is, forget it. But you bang, 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 bang. And that, because it's a very simple signal being transmitted, SOS, you know, and if you had your location, Baron Farm SOS, Baron Farm SOS, Baron Farm SOS, and you can automate that. And that is extraordinarily hard to jam. Every it just it is. So you have to trust physics in this a little bit. Um, technology. Modern software defined radio receivers are capable of very, very tight tuning. This this has potentially to also reduce the effectiveness of jamming. Um, also, some digital modes, JT65, for instance, can be decoded at levels at 20 dB or more below the noise level. This tends to be very slow, however. In other words, there are modes that you can put this radio in that e make it even way diff more difficult to jam, although you can only send very simple signals like, you know, SOS 01. And zero, everyone knows that 01 is that farm. SOS 05. Everyone knows that SO, uh, 05 is that farm. Detection. 
There are a number of software-defined radio receivers available at relatively low cost, less than $200, with the right software that could easily be used to detect significant broadband signals, i.e. jamming, on multiple bands. These are perfectly legal in the United States. Again, I, these are detectors. We're not jamming. These are software-defined radios that you configure to say, I would like to know what's being output across these signals. And when it comes up, let me know. Uh, caveat, detection of signals in the cell phone band is questionably legal. Why? We don't know. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. We looked around. We couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't understand what was legal. A decoder of cell phone signals, decoding the cell phone signals is illegal, but detecting the cell phone signals, I don't know why. I mean, in America, you turn on a software-defined radio and you see cell phone signals everywhere, but perhaps not if you're in a remote enough space. Maybe if you're saying, wait a minute, why is suddenly cell phone signals, if you're sitting there listening, it's kind of, think of it like, I thought of it like a radar detector in a car. So you set your radar detector and at one o'clock at night, you don't hear a lot of static and suddenly bam you see a whole bunch of cell phone signals kicking off well why at one o'clock at night in range of your detector in the middle of your farm in the middle of nowhere so in america it's uh, questionable is if cell phone detectors legal just detecting it decoding it is illegal but detecting that the cell phones in band use we don't know and we're not going to ask <laughs> um we do not believe simply detecting cell phone signals is illegal in the United States, but much of that equipment we're currently looking at excludes cell bands anyway. Okay, so that's what we talk about. That's what he got for you. Um, there's, I don't know, uh, eight things here for you. Transmission sup simplicity, antenna height, frequency selection, power, frequency hopping, operating mode, tech, um, the various technology that you can use in detection of the signal that's being jammed. Those are... A lot of good information. You can back this up, share it, do whatever you got to do. Let me know in the comments below where you think I got off. Like I said, go to uh, charlescarrollsociety.com. I'm going to post the um, the actual suggestion plus all the end notes with all of the references so that you can actually, uh, people who are smarter than me can look it up and challenge whatever we looked at by basic references. And again, we are trying to help those. We're not trying to help people just because they're white. We're not helping people just because they're black. We're not helping just because people just because they're Asian. We're helping people um, who may be being stomped on by an authoritarian government who's trying to seize their property and deny them rights based upon their race, which is offensive. And um, so that's what we're doing. Um, if you found this video um, beneficial, please uh, share it among your like-minded friends. Uh, I would like to thank everyone. We've gotten to over 100 subscribers in a, in a very short time, less than a month. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing the video. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, sorry that this video went a little bit long, but it's a technical video, so I think it needs to go that long. Um, there's more information, again, on Charles Carroll Society. Um, every week, uh, find some way for you to declare your noncompliance with this post-Christian society we live in. Shop at a farmer's market, do some gardening, do something to show your independence and self-sufficiency from this, from this system. If you see another person in need, try to help them. Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, either Virgin of Guadalupe. Three.